There is 100% agreement among health and science organizations that water fluoridation is safe and healthy for all of us, including children. In recent weeks, two short videos have been posted online that address the fluoridation debate currently taking place in Portland. In the first video, Dr. Yolanda White, a pediatrician, explains why she opposes fluoridation. In the second video, Dr. Wu, a pediatrician here in Portland, takes issue with many of Dr. White's factual assertions, calling them extremely misleading or simply flat out wrong. As a practicing dentist here in Portland with an interest in the fluoridation debate, I have taken time to carefully review both of these videos. With all due respect to Dr. Wu, a number of the assertions that he presented in the video are at odds with the facts. While I have no doubt Dr. Wu means well in his promotion of fluoridation, I believe it is important for voters to consider some of the errors he is making. The fact is that fluoride is not a drug. Dr. Wu's claim that fluoride is not a drug is not correct. Here is what the Food and Drug Administration says. Fluoride, when used in the prevention of disease in man or animal, is a drug that is subject to Food and Drug Administration regulation. When fluoride is added to a pill or a tablet to prevent tooth decay, the FDA labels it a drug. When fluoride is added to toothpaste, the FDA labels it a drug. This is one of the problems with fluoridation, because with all other medicines, it is the patient, not the doctor, that gets to determine which medicines to take. If, for example, I advise one of my patients to take this fluoride pill to help their teeth, I could not force them to do so. Yet that is what will happen if Portland fluoridates its water. The fact is that fluoride is not a drug. It's a mineral, much like calcium and potassium. This is an extremely misleading statement. While fluoride can exist in mineral form as calcium fluoride, the fluoride ion itself is not a mineral. More importantly, there is a critical distinction between fluoride, calcium, and potassium. Calcium and potassium are essential nutrients, but fluoride is not. Also, if fluoride was truly like calcium and potassium, you should be able to walk into your local grocery store and purchase fluoride supplements, just like you can with calcium and potassium, but you can't do this with fluoride. Instead, because of fluoride's toxic nature, you can only get a fluoride supplement if you have a prescription from a doctor or a dentist. The dose of fluoride that's supposedly effective in preventing dental cavities is very close to the dose that, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, can cause harm for some children. This statement is false. The recommended level of fluoride used in public water systems in the U.S is less than one-fifth of the EPA's maximum level allowed in drinking water. Dr. Wu is incorrect here. As you heard, Dr. White referred to the dose of fluoride, not the level of fluoride in drinking water. Dose refers to the total amount of fluoride that we receive from all sources. When it comes to fluoride's toxicity, it is our total daily dose that is the critical determination, not the level of fluoride in our water. Dr. White's statement that fluoride has a narrow margin of safety is well accepted in the scientific literature. Even the American Academy of Family Physicians, a pro-fluoridation organization, has acknowledged this, stating that it is important to recognize that a relatively narrow margin of safety may exist for development of dental fluorosis among children consuming fluoridated drinking water or consuming fluoride supplements. Another problem with Dr. Wu's statement is that his claim of a five-fold safety factor is based on a safety standard that the National Academy of Sciences concluded is unsafe and seriously outdated. And if you can't determine the amount of fluoride, then you can't determine the dose. And if you can't determine the dose of fluoride, then you can't determine safety. The level of fluoride that would be added to Portland's water system will be carefully measured and monitored at the recommended level of 0.7 parts per million. Dr. Wu has overlooked the difference between the level of fluoride that will be added to water and the dose of fluoride that we will actually ingest. No matter how carefully water treatment plants control the level of fluoride that goes into water, they cannot control the total amount of fluoride that we consume. This is because some people drink far more water than others and we receive fluoride from many other sources besides tap water, such as toothpaste, pesticide residues, tea products, and processed beverages. Studies show, for example, that some kids in non-fluoridated areas like Portland are already exceeding the recommended total intake of fluoride from just toothpaste alone. The most clearly visible side effect is dental fluorosis. 
a permanent staining of the teeth caused by fluoride's interference with normal tooth development. As a Portland-based, board-certified pediatrician who has practiced for 32 years, I can tell you that Dr. White's statements are very misleading. The severe form of fluorosis shown by Dr. White occurs in several areas of India, China, and other countries, but this is extremely rare in the United States. This claim is clearly not correct. Every single photo that Dr. White showed in this portion of the video is a photo of mild fluorosis, not severe fluorosis. In fact, one of these photos was published in a peer-reviewed medical journal as an example of mild fluorosis. Mild fluorosis causes cloudy staining to less than 50% of the tooth surface. As you can see here, the five photos that Dr. White showed have staining on less than 50% of the tooth surface. I'm surprised that Dr. Wu referred to these teeth as severe fluorosis. This, for example, is a photo of severe dental fluorosis. And here's another example. And another. As you can see, the photos Dr. White showed were not severe fluorosis. The most advanced form of fluorosis she showed, this one here, is moderate fluorosis, not severe. These forms of fluorosis now impact many American children. As Dr. White pointed out, 41% of American teenagers have some form of fluorosis, a percentage four times greater than the 10% estimate that Dean, the so-called father of fluoridation, predicted back in 1942. It is therefore incorrect for Dr. Wu to say that these forms of fluorosis are extremely rare in the United States. Children who drink fluoridated water while their permanent teeth are forming have less tooth decay later. Once the teeth are in the mouth, fluoride helps to reverse early signs of decay. This is how children benefit from drinking fluoridated water. Dr. Wu's summary here leaves out an important fact that Portlanders should know before voting. Dr. Wu discusses how fluoride prevents tooth decay but fails to mention fluoride's alleged benefit comes almost entirely from its topical contact with the teeth not from ingestion. In other words, fluoride's benefit does not require that you swallow a single drop of it. So one question that Portlanders should be asking is, does it make sense to add a chemical to our water supply that does not need to be swallowed? In my professional opinion, it would be reckless to do so, particularly a chemical with as many safety concerns as fluoride. After all, those who actually want to apply fluoride to their teeth can easily do so by choosing toothpaste with fluoride. A far better approach to reducing tooth decay is to provide low-income families with toothbrushes, fluoridated toothpaste, and dental floss. Centers for Disease Control, the American Dental Association, the National Research Council, and the Environmental Protection Agency all agree that the 0.7 level is safe and effective for babies, kids, and people of all ages. There is a critical error in Dr. Wu's statement here that parents should be aware of. Although Dr. Wu claims that the CDC says 0.7 parts per million is beneficial for baby teeth, the CDC disclosed to the U.S. Senate last year that it is unaware of data showing benefits to teeth during the first six months of life. The National Research Council states that the optimum fluoride intake for a baby under six months of age is just 0.01 milligrams per day. This is about 70 times less fluoride than what formula-fed babies will consume if Portland fluoridates its water. My concern is based in part on a large body of research finding that modestly elevated levels of fluoride can reduce a child's intelligence. This may be the most serious misrepresentation of all. This article, often cited by anti-fluoride activists, reviewed studies from China, Mongolia, and Iran, including water samples in which the natural fluoride levels were 400 to 1200 percent higher than the recommended level for fluoridating water in the U.S. Dr. Wu is off base here. First, he fails to mention that one of the studies in the Harvard Review found significant IQ loss at just 0.9 parts per million among children with iodine deficiency. This is only slightly higher than the level Portland plans to add to its water. Ten other studies in the Harvard Review found significant IQ loss at 3 parts per million or less, a level of exposure that some Americans may be exposed to when all sources of fluoride, including fluoridated water, are considered. 
The Harvard researchers who examined these fluoride IQ studies took the unusual step of publicly distancing themselves from the claims that anti-fluoride groups were making about these studies. Also, it appears that Dr. Wu never contacted the Harvard scientists to verify his claim that they don't think their study is relevant to fluoridation. Dr. Wu relied instead on a newspaper article from Wichita, Kansas. Had Dr. Wu contacted the Harvard scientists themselves, he would have learned that they strongly disagreed with the Wichita paper's assessment. To quote the senior Harvard scientist who wrote the study, to which extent this risk applies to fluoridation in Wichita or Portland or elsewhere is uncertain, but definitely deserves concern. Thousands of studies and over 65 years of experience show that water fluoridation at recommended levels safely strengthens and protects the teeth and bones of children and everyone else in the community. Although Dr. Wu refers to thousands of studies, Portlanders should know that fluoridation's safety and effectiveness has never been proven by a single randomized controlled trial. A randomized controlled trial is the gold standard for medical treatments, and drugs generally won't receive approval by the FDA without having one. In Western Europe, 97% of the population now drinks water without a single drop of fluoride added to it. In Sweden, for example, the parliament rejected fluoridation back in the 1970s based on the medical recommendations of Dr. Arvid Carlson, a Nobel laureate in medicine. With all due respect to Dr. Wu and the U.S. health establishment, I agree with Dr. Carlson. Water fluoridation is an outdated, unnecessary, and reckless medical practice. I encourage all Portlanders to vote to keep their water unmedicated. I urge you to vote no to fluoridation this May.